Welcome to TJM podcast series, The Inside Hour. I'm very happy to host you two of you today on the occasions of the International Women's Day. So today our topic will be inspire inclusions. And can each of you share a bit of your background and journey that led you to your current role today? Can we start with Ms. Tan? Yep. Thank you for uh, thank you TGM for the invitation uh, for me to being uh, doing the podcast with a very interesting topic to celebrate our International Women's Day. Uh, my name is Tan. I am deputy director of Christina Noble Children Foundation in Vietnam. We have been uh, in uh, Vietnam for 35 years, working tirelessly to have a lot of to change life of thousands of children in Vietnam. So my, my personal journey as a uh, AIDS generation was we were born uh, after the Vietnam War about 10 years. So we experienced a lot for the women's disparity. And also uh, as a mother of two daughters, I got experience a lot for that journey. So that's the reasons uh, that fuel my commitment to research, to do advocate for the diversity and inclusion for uh, the girls and for the women empowerment. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. How about you, Tanya? Super inspiring. Uh, so uh, hello, everybody. And also thank you for having this podcast. It's uh, very important. My name is Tatiana Masarska Laska. I am chief, Exp uh, chief experience officer in TGM Research. And um, thank you for giving an opportunity to, to share the experience. Uh, I think it's very important to, to do what we're doing because we can inspire other generations as well. Mm. So my background is uh, industrial engineer, but I also have a degree in marketing and management. I was starting my career in Poland in the market research consultancy area, and then I shifted to the construction uh, industry where I was going through different roles from the executives to the team leadership to the board membership uh, in different countries, seven countries on the way uh, in Europe, Asia, Middle East and Africa. My last assignment was general manager for the organization in Israel. And during all those journeys and trips, I learned a lot how to appreciate people, differences, different cultures, how to embrace the diversity and inclusion. And I'm super happy that we have this podcast today and we can talk a little bit more about those topics. Uh, same mm -hmm. with me because uh, I was born in Vietnam, you know, and we are bound by many societal norms that, you know, when you are a certain age, you have to get married, a certain age, you have to get have children and fulfill your roles as a mother, as a wife, something like that. So this is a very interesting topic for me. Uh, so what makes you guys to be an advocate uh, for inclusions in the context, especially in the context of uh, women's empowerment? I can start. Yeah. Um, for me, it's all about the mindset. So this is what we have. This is how we act. And uh, this is also how we lead by example, because it's very easy to say, OK, diversity, OK, let's be inclusive but it's much more difficult to do it daily because you have to be open, you have to be committed, you have to be open to different opinions, to different people, to embrace the differences. And I feel responsible personally as a woman uh, that went through different journeys, but also as a board member in the company, that we promote this type of behaviors, this type of mindset, and we also act by showing the example. My experience, I, I was born uh, in a family where my mother has a great opportunity to study as a doctor. Yes, to follow what she really liked to do. Oh. And that's the reason that I have a very better opportunity compared to my peers. That I, there's no default setting, then there's no stereotyping for myself. Uh, so that's the reasons why I feel that I feel uh, grateful for that and I need to do something to have for another girls in uh, Vietnam that is still to lack of uh, access 
to be an equal position uh, to what they really good at. So when I work for a, a children foundation, I really uh, want to every children uh, need to be loved, uh, need to be heard and respected. So uh, that is the context that I dedicate for the diversity and inclusion. Yeah, I got a chance to uh, uh, join a training uh, by the U.S. Consulate in Ho Chi Minh City about women's empowerment. And I realized that, uh, like Tanya said, it's all about the mindset and it's all mm -hmm. about how you love yourself, uh, believe in yourself so that you, you, are, you will be empowered and not, being, uh, not about being uh, care, being judged, something like that. If I can add to that, um, you shared about your mom. My mom was also an example for me because she was a very successful person in the bioscience, which is very man dominated. And she was very successful leading projects that are breathtaking. I also had a colleague in construction industry that was the first female uh, product manager responsible for the heavy duty equipment. Mm. And she was also very successful. And I also have a very good friend of mine here in Vietnam, and she is leading a company which is technology based and the developing prosthetics. So all of them heard at some point of time, don't do it, it's not for you. And they all continue doing this what they like, like, like you said about your mother, mm -hmm. and they are all successful. So I really like what you just said. It's about believing in yourself, being persistent, and believing that you can achieve it and just go for challenges. So what you just said also remind me of a quote from Oprah Winfrey. Self-esteem comes from uh, being able to defy the world in your own terms uh, and refusing to abide by judgments of others. So from your vantage point of global context in Vietnam, uh, how do you access the current state of uh, women's empowerment and women's inclusions in both workplace and society recently? Wow, that's a big question. Uh, it's actually interesting from my point of view, um, and maybe I can share the contents from the countries that I was traveling. You can hear about women empowerment and the topic that is brought by governments a lot and almost everywhere. So we see it in the papers, there are reports and uh, people are talking about it. There are also governments that are putting quotes on some positions that feel to be filled by the women. So we see also in the big companies, by the way. So we see there is a good tendency that um, society can see that it's a very important topic. And we also see that changes are made. However, from my perspective and from my observations, I think those changes are very slow. Uh, if you read some recent reports, you will see that with the pace that we are currently driving those changes in closing the gaps, we will be on the equal levels in 130 years, which is great news but, uh, because it's a progress, but it's still far away. Um, and I think I will mention again what I mentioned before. A lot depends, of course, on the governments and on the companies, but also a lot depends on us, employers, so companies that are employing uh, people, and also us women. And I will give a TGM research as an example. In our board, we have 40% of women. Uh, in my previous assignment, it was 60% of women in the executive board. So everything is possible if we create an environment which is promoting uh, respect, uh, giving equal chances to everybody to be developed and also to develop to the leadership positions. So I think there is a progress, like you said, but still a lot of things can be done. From my uh, point of view, uh, Vietnam has a lot of legislative uh, framework to promote and to support for the diversity, inclusion uh, and uh, E e equity. So, uh, for example, we have the national strategy for uh, for 
diversity support for diversity inclusion up to 2030 uh, in healthcare education uh, and, and in the services we provide to especially to the uh, minor ethnic group of people but uh, in the labor workforce there is uh, some of the report shows that there is still the disparity in the uh, uh, ways disparity compared from men and women uh, the leadership position in uh, in the senior level or in the board of management uh, for example in the national assembly there is a rate of 27 of the national assembly members are women yeah so some of the um, societal norms there's still a lot of uh, disparity in the workplace uh, and also in the society regarding to the inclusion regarding to the uh, gender disparity but I suggest that um, like Tanya say if the company have a clear policy to encourage for the women and also now women the, the female employees of the company we have the labor law to support for you so if you raise your voice if you if you believe it yourself you work for your career so everything can be changed and everything can be possible for you so recently when i researched for the topic of women's empowerment uh, there is a story and i read that story and then i tried to ask some of my friends or other people that I met. So the story is about um, a father taking uh, his sons to have an interview at a company. So they are at a parking lot and the sons receive a call from the CEO of the company that he's going to interview. And he looked at his father and his father told him, okay, just pick up the fall and then we can come up. And when he picked up the fall, from the fall, the CEO said, uh, good luck, son, you will nail it. And then the story is that um, we, we asked people, what do you think, who is the CEO? And interestingly, in let's say like five people that I asked, only two of them can say that this is the mother of the son, of, of, of the, the, the boy. But most of them will say, this is, uh, who is that guy? He's the guy, you know, like uh, naturally it comes out from people's mind that the CEO of a company would be a man and not a woman. So still, I believe there are still uh, some societal norms that w the gender equity is still, we, we still need a lot of effort from like the governments, the companies and individuals mm -hmm. to make it uh, bigger and to foster it for the future of the inclusions for women. Can I share one story? Okay. Mm -hmm. We just shared before the meeting, uh, also preparing for this uh, meeting, I was searching and I found a very interesting um, research, I think by Harvard. Um, they made the research to exactly to trying to understand what are the factors that are stopping women to be promoted in the company. And because they did all type of researches, they decided to go in different way and they put kind of sensors on women and men in this company to see how uh, maybe they are behaving differently. Maybe women don't have access to the management. Maybe don't, they don't have enough time to speak. And interestingly, after this, they checked everything and there were no differences. So women were getting exactly the same time with the management, with the tasks, with the different projects. So they came to the conclusion, it's not about what we do, it's about how we see it. So even though that the men and women were getting exactly the same assessment of the performance, men were promoted, but women not. So, like you said, it's something as a bias still yeah. stopping us. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm very lucky to work for many companies that foster the inclusions for women. For example, when I worked for Edomant, a uh, marketing agency, 90% um, of our staffs are women. And then also in the other companies, uh, which is JLL, we have 
a committee of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and we work together with all the regional teams monthly on the activities, how we include the women in the workplace, and how we create a playground for them to to be confident and to perform well in, in their roles. And now at TGM, what I like about TGM is that I'm always being heard. And um, to be honest, because sometimes, uh, because we were born in Vietnam and there's um, a barriers of hierarchy that you have to respect to your boss and there's always a barrier with you and your boss that you cannot always telling the truth, telling he or she what you think. But here at TGM, um, I feel very uh, comfortable in saying or sharing my feeling about a specific uh, problem at work, a specific project, or feel free uh, to contribute my ideas into projects and, um, and not being afraid to be judged by them. So that's the great thing when I started working for TGM. And maybe I'll share one more story. Um, so in my uh, last role, when I was a general manager, we had the evaluation, like a yearly evaluation of people. And uh, in this evaluation, people can put, okay, where do I see myself in five, 10 years? So I got a lot of evaluations saying, general manager, general manager, general manager, general manager. I said, wow, a lot of potential in the company. And when I looked, all of those general managers were coming from men oh. and none from the women. And, you know, I was new in the organization, so I didn't have a good feeling. Is it uh, valid or not valid? But what I realized is generally men are more courageous. Uh, so if you say to them, hey, do you believe you can be a general manager? The men will say, yeah, of course. It doesn't matter if he has skills or knowledge or experience he's ready to go. But if you ask a woman, uh, she will say, okay, let me think. I, I don't have experience in this, but I did this and that. She, so she starts to be a very pragmatic uh, in evaluation of herself. Instead of just going through it, yes, of course I can do it. And if I don't know, I will learn. And I think this is also a very important skill that a woman has to learn. It doesn't matter what you go for it and you will learn, like you just said, you made it uh, because you had a passion, you cared, uh, you wanted to achieve it and you learned whatever you had to learn. So it's also a mindset. Yeah. Mindset is very important. Yes. Yeah, so bow us back. Yeah. So um, being a leader, sometimes we feel very lonely, right? Yeah. So uh, during my uh, working journey, I I feel also very lonely. Just last year, I, I realized that sometimes we feel burnout, out, but we don't know how to uh, solve it out for our problem. We got the mentor from, uh, from the person who never judged us uh, for what is right or what is wrong. Mm. We have colleagues uh, together with us, but sometimes after come back home with uh, families, with daughters, I feel I really need something to solve it out for my problem. And I realize that uh, I, I see the, the way that we compassionate about our, ourselves, not for all others, compassionate about ourselves, understand ourselves is the very best way that we trigger for uh, our problem especially the working mom like me uh, with a full schedule working at a team with the team with the a lot of projects in uh, the office and then back home we busy with the children and uh, and uh, also so this is very important that every woman uh, we need to have time for reflect for ourselves and of course we we need to have surrounding uh, supporters, like mentors, like colleagues, like everything that you you can understand yourself and you develop more. Yeah. yeah, I think what you said about mentor and I forgot to say, it's important to understand that it's a very safe environment. So yeah. when you have a mentorship, mm -hmm. you agree that whatever you say, it's confidential and it stays within this room and never leaves the room. And mm. this is really helpful, like you said, it, uh, you feel in the safe zone 
and you can share and you can learn and you feel just good about being there and feeling this confident with this person. Yeah. I think it's a very important point. Yeah. I think the greatest mentor of my <coughs> life is my mom. I remember she told me that I'm a very uh, stubborn child when I was a kid. And it's very, very headache for her to think of how to raise me in the right way. Because I was very selfish and I didn't care about anything. I'm just doing what I think. So that uh, she's the one who shaped me who I am today. And she's always spending time uh, to listen to, to my stories every day. Like you said, we have uh, mm. things, we have mm. problems with people, we have problems at work. And then every day we always spend time to share with each other. And she will listen to me without being, without judge. And also she will try to be with my side, but not, uh, but not always like I'm the right one. She will always say, like, okay, I understand how you feel. But the thing is in this, uh, scenario in this situation what you did was wasn't right I'm just saying that because you have to aware that mm -hmm. this led to the consequence that you are suffering now mm -hmm. so you have to change yourself so that you can feel better next time because it's all about me being overthinking mm -hmm. <laughs> about things so like I think the greatest mentor of my life is my mom so we just share many inspiring stories and experience from you guys uh, what advice or uh, call to action would you give to businesses or individuals in fostering women's in inclusions? Um, we can start with you. Yep, uh, thank you. So uh, for individuals, uh, for every woman, I think that we need to equip with our knowledge and uh, experience by ourselves to understand about diversity, about our right, about the inclusion, uh, to to raise our voice whenever we need, or to drive change. For anyone uh, like me, as a working mom, of a lot of uh, responsibility and also a lot of societal norms, my advice for the working uh, mom is. You understand yourself. You you will be the compassionate about yourself. You allow yourself to have time. Sometimes you need you need time to break. Sometimes you need to be yourself away from the daily responsibility to prevent you to get very burnt out from your daily life. Uh, for businesses. I believe that I will leave the answer to Tanya. Uh, for organizations like us, like INGO, like educational institution, we provide the mentor, we provide the services to uh, not only to the girls, to every child, every children. Uh, since they started to study, they understand about the gender, the diversity, the inclusion, to help them to have a diverse the broader knowledge about the world. So from the business's perspective, maybe, and uh, I'm very proud that I'm representing TGM because like I said and I mentioned before, we are committed to drive diversity and inclusion. And for the businesses, I would just advise the same. Just look at the structures, look at the culture you would like to create in the company and define for yourself is this is the culture that I would like to share with my people, with my employees, the culture of diversity and inclusion. We decided to go there because it's very important for us because we're also a global company and this is a definition how we work. But it's also a culture that we would like to create in our company that everybody feels good, respected and willing to share the opinion, understanding that he or she will be listened. It's also important to say that from the business perspective, diversity leads to innovations. The more thoughts you have, the more opinions you have, you are getting more creative ideas. And from the business perspective, if you are getting more creative ideas, you're creating more opportunities. When you're creating more opportunities, you're overachieving, you're overdoing what the rest of the market is doing. So from the business perspective, it's a pure adventure to go through this journey 
but it's also pure benefit to go from this journey. So it's a win-win, absolutely win-win. And uh, from the personal advice, um, I will quote my friend, uh, don't let others to define yourself. Be yourself. If you are believing in yourself, if you have some passion, just go for it. And I am always saying that we are the best promoters of ourselves. We create our brand. And uh, we have to remember that we are living in the world that everybody is busy. You know, uh, we are doing so many tasks. But if you believe that you did something outstanding or you have a creative idea, just have a courage, go and share it. There are different forums. You can share it in the team meeting, you can share it with your team leader, you can share it in the town hall, or you can even share it in the coffee break when you speak to your colleagues. Just share how great you are and don't be afraid to go for challenges like we were mentioning before. Even if you don't know or you believe that you have not enough knowledge or skills, don't worry, you will get there, you will learn it, and there are thousands of people that are willing to help. And that will be my advice. If you have one quote, um, one word to say to the woman, um, what would you say? I would say, go for it. <laughs> I would say that, believe in yourself. I would say trust yourself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Tanya, thank you, Ms. Han, for a very inspiring and interesting section today. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah.